Hi, Mark Savage here and welcome to my channel. Ducati Multistrada 2015 1200S DBT. It's a big mouthful for a beautiful bike. Today's review, a lot more in depth. Normally when doing a review, I just give the very basics. 20 litre tank size, size of the wheels, miles per gallon, and a few little other ones. Today I'm gonna to go a bit more in depth in that, as I said in the first little intro. So you're gonna get all the specs, the bad bits. There are some bad bits, if I'm honest with you. And I've mentioned them in my other video, but again, a bit more in depth today. Now there are three versions, the ordinary one, the Ducati S and the D Air. But this is the S version. Now this did originally start as a touring model. There are four, the touring pack, sports pack, enduro, and the urban pack. Someone messed around with this one, and I said it's designed in a reverse Pikes Peak, or that was a touring, and it's clear evidence this once had panniers. It has got cruise control, heated grips, and a much nicer display being the S version. This model has the semi-active Ducati Skyhook suspension system. Very nice LED front headlights, and they are very, very bright. Unlike the model I fitted on my retroly done on my Triumph Tiger, these are actually designed that way, and they're very, very bright. Now, this DVT engine with a variable timing system on here, it independently controls the intake and exhaust camshafts, meaning you get 8% better fuel consumption out of here. Now, for the 2015 model, the Mark II, they increased 10 horsepower from 150 to 160 brake. Not only does it better fuel consumption, but also decreases emissions as well. The 1198 engine has two spark plugs per cylinder. So this engine, you get longer service intervals, 9,500 for a service, and the big one, 18.6 for the variable timing, the big Desmo one. Now, labor costs, something we're gonna talk about a bit later. Along with ABS, it does have DWC, Ducati's really control, which you can adjust. And this is what I was gonna explain a lot about today. On this clock, you don't just have, when a BMW, I'd like to refer this to the BMW, I mean, it's got the same 20 litre tank. This is 160 brake, when it's BMW GS, it's only 125 brake. Now, weight-wise, it says 235 kilos. It really doesn't feel like it. BMW say 243 for their GS, a lot heavier when you've got the GSA and the panniers and everything else. That's a heavy lump, quite tall. Although they're both the same seat height. This goes from 825, 32 inches odd, to 850, 33 odd inches. You do notice that. BMW was always quite high and quite lumpy engine, hard to push around. It says 200 miles to tank, the BMW says 190. You're never gonna get 200 miles out of this tank. It's not gonna do it. And again, the top speed of this little baby, 165, and the BMW, 125 mile an hour. You do notice a difference, a lot more reactive. Bad points coming up though. They have raised the engine on here, and they reckon that seven inches more ground clearance on here. Seven inches. That's a lot. And I've had a Mark I and a Mark II now. Um, and the difference I've noticed as well, on a service, if you want to do this yourself, I mean, servicing costs, oh, they're a lot of money. But then you've got to look at BMW being the same sort of money, to be honest with you. You'll get all the panels off, but I was told on the Mark I, the spark plug is very, very hard to get hold of on this second cylinder here. It's, it's pushing down. And yet on this model, I've noticed they've now got a tube which is here and not a solid block, and I can see the spark plug, so that's not gonna be a problem with this one. I can physically see three spark plugs already, and I'll probably get a tank off, get the other one. So I will be doing the spark plugs, air filter, oil filter, when they need doing. But I said the servicing now is a lot longer than it was before. And the wheelie control on here, DWC, sounds good, doesn't it? I've noticed that, put it in sport, take that off, and the front will come up. You do notice that. Now I'm riding in urban mode at present minute, and with urban mode, you can also adjust the power settings to low, medium, and high. Now urban normally is 100 brake, sport and touring is 160, enduro is 100. But when you get into here, this computer bit here, I'm gonna call it a computer, they do call it something else, Ducati. You can change the settings. So I'm guessing, obviously low is 100, high is gonna be 160 brake. I'm running this in urban, and I'm running it at medium. So let's call it 130 brake, unless someone else tells me something I don't know. 
I'm finding that quite enjoyable. A little bit of meaty power. The throttle response in urban isn't as angry um, or urgent. Um, I'm quite enjoying it. It's nice to be able to whack open the throttle and not feel like you're going to lose control. And also in urban, the bike lowers to 825 mil. And as you all know, I've not got the longest legs. I'm 29, 30 inch leg with boots on, and I am not, not tippy toe, but I'm very comfortable. Elite 50 is from the rear, so it's not, it's not uncomfortable. I'm still quite happy doing it. You have DTC, Ducati Traction Control on here as well. Ride by wire, so you haven't got the cables all coming out here. And as I said, I like the fact you, on the BMW again, <laughs> you had your ordinary modes. This you've got touring, sport, urban and enduro. And then you've got subsections, you can change all these as well. And I mean everything from the wheelie control, the DTC control, ABS, you can change all of that. What you can't control, unfortunately, and I haven't found it yet, is if I'm in touring, which is quite nice, the seat height is 850 and urban's 825. I'd like to be able to control that, so I like it in sport, but lower for me, as I've got no legs. Now it does have a few issues, okay? The bolts, people moan about these a lot. I found them on Kawasaki, Triumph, BMW. They're not using top rate bolts anymore. They really aren't. Um, and the moment you get out of the summer, which you know I'm an all year round rider, the road salt gets on these and it really does corrode them. Um, I noticed on the wheels as well, it corrodes them as well. So I'm actually gonna get just a little thousand pound run around for the winter. I don't wanna ruin this bike, she's just too pretty. But it's a shame they haven't invested the money for what you pay for these new is a lot of money, 18 odd grand. Why they wouldn't have put a few more pounds into the bolts, I just don't know. I cannot see the Sense and the Bluetooth app. You're gonna connect your phone to the bike, which doesn't always like connecting, and if you are connected, doesn't always do it per journey. And then you can connect your headphones if you want to listen to them to the bike. Well, it, most Android phones, you're just gonna connect straight from your phone, straight to your earpiece. So why it's got the Bluetooth little gimmick on it, I don't know. I thought it was gonna be like Mercedes have an app that you can have on your phone and you can investigate the servicing and so on. That would've been really clever. This doesn't have that app. Not that I'm aware of, and maybe the newer models do. But at present minute, all I'm aware, this Bluetooth app just literally bypasses your phone to here, to here, to your headphones. There's just no sense in it. People also moan about the throttle control. Between three and 5,000 revs, there is a lull, and then you get this sort of power band. If you ride a BMW, it's a constant lull. So, to have a little power band, to give you some more power for the 160 brake, I'm quite enjoying that, to be honest with you. It is urgent, you do want to get there, and it's a lot of fun doing it as well, especially in the 160 brake. I so said, I'm running about 130 brake on the medium, on urban, and it's not too bad at all. I know I can get myself out of trouble. Even the 100 brake, to be honest with you, was still fun, but it was a case of really whacking it open. Something I have to say, and I had this with the Mark 1 as well, as well as this one, starting. I don't know what it is, the battery's fully charged, I always have mine on an Ultimate charger overnight, you know, every time I park it up, I pop it on this. They start very slowly, and you're always, always in the back of your mind, is it going to start? You go, woo, 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 and she'll go away and start. But I'm, I'm not ecstatic with that, I must admit. Now I do have, if you watch my other videos, I did a garage chat where I've got them little charging units. It's a flat thing, about so big, and um, you can jump start your bike. I've got it under here. It's just for peace of mind, because you're never going to bump start this baby. So, yeah, a little bit annoying, and it is common for these to do this, for whatever reason. I mean, the battery's a massive battery. I've drop tested, it's chucking at 14 volts, so 14 odd volts is brilliant, you know? It is just seems to be a fault of the bike. And people's other major moan is, as I said, labour costs. An ordinary service, £240 for an oil service. Um, plugs, you know, you're talking about four or five hundred pounds for a full Desmo one. Wow, that's going to cost you a few pennies. Obviously, I will have to put it in for the valve timing because I'm not going to do that. But for the simple spark plug, oil, air filter, I'm going to do that. A video on here of a simple oil change on my other one I had, and that had to get the belly pan down. Now, someone messed with this already. I said, took the panniers off and a few other little bits. I'll put most of it all back on again. Never had the panniers. have got the locks. That's how I knew already this did have them on there, but someone took them off to make it look like a reverse Pikes Peak version. Um, and I said adventure, I mean adventure style riding position, which is upright, which I really got used to, to be honest with you, and that is a real joy. Very, very comfortable. I've rode many bikes now, and a lot of them aren't comfortable. This I really do enjoy, and in touring mode, I've hit some potholes, and we've got them here in England, and do you know what? It hasn't, it hasn't 
pushed me off, hasn't jarred my back or broke it in any way, shape or form. When I rode the Triumph ST Sprint the other week, you know, I hit a bump that I was launched up in the air and, you know, I really missed this huge travel suspension. Brembo brakes on here, the other one's got all-ins and so on. They do seem to pick and choose what they like to put on here. Now, the cruise control works really well. I've quite enjoyed riding with that. I've been out for a long ride this morning, hence I'm very hot. It is about 30 degrees here, end of August, and I've been for a nice long ride. I intend to finish it off, but I thought I'd say hi to you guys and just say, bloody lovely bike. Fuel consumption, as I said, technically it says 8% better, and I have noticed it's a lot better. Much better than my Triumph, and much better than the old one before. I'm toying with the idea about the exhaust. It has got a nice sound to it, but I am toying with the idea. Um, Delkovich do a whole exhaust system, cut to 300 pounds. Then you seem to get just the end can you want six, 700 pounds for. And I'm battling, is it worth me doing that, really? Um, I can start the bike outside my house without peeing the neighbours off. And if I get a nice noise exhaust, like on Mark 1 of the MIV exhaust on there, it woke the dead up, <laughs> you know? But I really did enjoy it. Um, I want to be seen and heard. You really do get seen with this. The other day I actually come up behind a work colleague who said to me the next day that he see me way, way back. My lights really did ping against his car mirror. Um, he knew I was coming. Now that was really good to hear. So as I said, these riding modes, and you're going to get the camera unfortunately, it's a beautiful day here. But you get these riding modes and this turns the other way when um, the lights are on as well. But you can see them in urban mode. Now when you get in urban mode, you don't get the rev counter, which you do get in the other mode. If I go to sports and touring, you get the rev counter, and these are the setups here. Now, if you push and hold, then you can go into all the other little settings here, which is nice, riding modes, press that again, and you get sport, and then it gives you all of the other little bits you can go into. So here we have the urban mode, let's just pop back into sport. Push and hold. Now you get the rev counter, and the back of the bike is coming up while I speak. And now I've got the rev counter full 160, which is brilliant. Now I've gained extra 25 mil from the rear, so I better be careful when I sit on it. I do remember when I had the BMW and you had these settings, you had helmet, helmet and panniers, two helmets and panniers. And um, we left the house with me and my wife on the back and um, I was outside of the curb, and when I got to my destination, I put my foot down for the first time about 20 miles. I was like, oh my God, I could barely touch the floor. It jacked the bike right up. The suspension does stiffen for panniers and so on. Remember, I've not got panniers on this now, so it literally will just be my weight on here. The missus doesn't get on the back of the bike anymore, hence I'm not riding a great big tourer. A huge, huge bugbear of mine at present minute with this lovely Ducati, and it's for the whole range, as far as I'm aware, is this false neutrals. Fourth, fifth, coming back down again. Some people said it's into fourth as well. This is just between fourth and fifth gear. I've adjusted the clutch, so it takes more bite. I adjusted the pedal down, and someone mentioned about the chain. I've got the chain bang on. I still get them. Now, you have to adjust your riding technique, skill, whatever you want to call it. I now know first, second, give it something third and fourth, and then not so much into fifth gear, and it clicks in lovely. If you're giving it some through the gears, you will get that false neutral, and it's horrible, because you can open her up, you know you're not in a gear, it's not into fifth gear, and you've got to either slam it down or click it up, and it makes this horrible grinding noise, and you start to fear that you're gonna cause more damage to the cogs inside, which is a possibility. I've found if I pop it back into fourth, it doesn't make such horrible grinding noises, and we'll go back into fifth. I'm getting it every third ride now if I'm just not concentrating. I also changed my boots as well. I've got my summer boots that are quite thin. I've got these short crop boots on now that are a bit thicker. My winter boots are really thick, and it doesn't seem to do it with them, and just get really hot feet in this sort of weather. So you have to adjust yourself style of riding. You have to. You just have to adjust your style of riding, which I think is something to get used to for a beautiful bike. Screen height, gah! Originally it had this tiny little carbon screen, which is loads of money by the way. I put this plastic one back on. I think I need the little lip. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> in this lovely hot day like today, matching colors, come on. I like my own face helmet. Bugs, they're just evil. If you haven't got a visor, you know what they're hitting. Your face. I had one slam me in the side of the face earlier and stung, left a mark there. 
I mean, it must have been a huge bumblebee, like this sort of size, honestly. What, the sting I had, and the couple stung me here. I've said this before, you've got the whole bloody place. Why do you just go for this tiny bit here? Stop it! Oh, thank you. This rises and lowers a few millimetres, a couple of inches. They boast at that, and it's manual as well. Um, I'm going to see if I get the little top one on there. I do like the idea not having to have the screen bugs. However, I'm getting old, open those helmet, in the winter time would be great as well. These protect your hands quite nicely. But I forgot to mention as well, this has dual braking. Um, and the percentage is also in what riding mode you're in. So it uses both brakes as well. I found, I like, I'm a back brake rider anyway. Change down gear, remember it's a twin. And I like using my back brake a lot as well. And it doesn't seem to do an awful lot. I have bought a new set of brakes. So up and coming videos of me doing a complete brake change for this little baby. I did buy some Brimbo brakes. You can get them for 60 odd quid. God knows what they're gonna charge you in a Ducati main dealer. A bloody damn sight more, I bet ya. But these are jobs you can do yourself. More bugs. Fuck off. Stung the other day cutting the grass. It's like wildlife believers there here, isn't it? And it's so hot. Oh. Hard enough, we're gonna go for a ride. So to finish, we sum up. 20 litre tank, 200 miles. No. But it is better than the Mark 1 and better than the BMW. 160 brake, you can play with them settings, well worth it. And the screen, the main dash, they call it Ducati IECU, I don't know, UCI, yeah. they do call it something. That is real brain box. I've often said rain mode, weather mode, leave them. But it's nice the fact this one, you can change it in the mode you want to. This has also had the butterfly taking out of the exhaust and some power command system put in there, it doesn't mess around too much. It does sound nice when you give it some, I've got to say, but I do like a bit more noise. When I'm actually cruising at 70 miles an hour, I don't hear her, which is nice touring. I did 140 mile originally back here and that wasn't a nice ride. Watch the video, you probably already have. That wasn't nice. I've done a lot more miles than this. I'm riding it back and forth to work and except the false neutrals, I really am enjoying it. And then playing with the settings, which I said is unusual for me, because I like to get used to a bike rather than you know mess around the other way, the bike has to get used to me. I'm having to change my style of riding because of this bloody false neutral. Hopefully they're gonna get this sorted out. It just seems you pay an awful lot of money for a bike that I can get on a 20-year-old Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki and Honda and have a nicer ride. But you remember the 16 plate BMW I had, GS, that had a really clunky, noisy gearbox, and the 11 plate one I had was beautiful. This gearbox is identical to the Mark I, but all in, it is a definite improvement. The engine is higher, giving you more ground clearance, a bit more brake horsepower, a few more gadgets, better fuel consumption, variable timing helps, less emissions, yay to the environment, and all round, a lovely looking bike. I picked the quietest road in Braintree. It's not even a road, it's a fucking track. Five cars, what's going on? And on. So, there we have it. Thank you so much, please like and subscribe. All I'm doing with the Ducati for the basics, next couple of videos that will come up, not yet by the way, will be brakes and the service, keep your eye out for them. And whatever comes through my way. Thank you so much for watching. I'm off for a nice ride to cool down now. Take care of yourselves on the road. Bye bye. It's not how I want this video to go. I had arranged for someone to be here. A really good video. It's a damn shame I didn't get to do it. Ha! Hello and welcome to my channel, Mark Savage here. Today's chat, a little bit more in depth. Normally I just explain about these bikes, about miles per gallon, tank size, and the basic bits. Today's interview, today's review, be a lot more in depth. The 
short for Desmo Timing Variable Valve System on here. Now, this actually... Really? Sorry if I need in here. It's alright, don't worry. Yeah, I'm filming, don't worry fella. If you want to park up, I'll move if you want to. <laughs> okay. Come on, fella. Now, Whew. so as I said, these riding. More bugs. Fuck off. I stung the other day cutting the grass. It's like wildlife believers out here, isn't it? And it's so hot for a nice ride to cool down now. Take care of yourselves on the road. Bye bye.